All right, welcome to Housing Bubble 2.0. Uh, another little short five minute news bite here. And um, obviously, I got the timer on. So, five minutes of me talking news. We're not going to count the preamble stuff here. So, hope you're doing well. But first of all, if you're not already a subscriber, if you could do me a great favor, smash that subscribe button, help my channel grow. And if you think you're a subscriber, I've been having a lot of problems with losing subscribers and having some shadow banning going on, I think, um, you know, over the past few weeks. So if you're not sure that you're still subscribed, please subscribe so we can maintain the growth here. I do appreciate that. So we're going to talk about right now is the fact that some landlords need to sell properties because of these eviction uh, moratoriums. And I've been talking about this for quite a few months now. This is kind of like the segment of the market that we don't really focus on. Uh, the media, mainstream media, is focusing on issues with forbearance and primary property owners, which I, I get it, it makes sense. But here's the situation. You've got landlords. I'm, talking, I'm not talking big institutional company landlords. I'm talking mom pod landlords here, right? Federal ban on evictions is putting the squeeze on smaller landlords who are unable to directly access COVID relief funds. And some are starting to sell their properties to recoup some losses. Uh, the main issue we have here is this will reduce the much needed affordable rent stock in an already unaffordable housing market. So here's the deal. If I'm a landlord, I'm not getting paid. I got a couple of properties. At some point in time, I'm going to have to stop dipping into my finances to carry this stuff and say, the heck with it, I'm selling, okay? So as they said here, um, Congress has earmarked over $50 billion towards rent but relief, but the requirements change based on state and local jurisdiction. And the, the problem is that the tenants are the ones that have to initiate this. The landlords just can't get money, relief money. The tenants have to be the ones to start the process. So if there's a lack of communication or there's some ill will between landlord and tenant or problems or whatever, if the tenants aren't, aren't moving forward, the landlord's never going to get this money, all right? And tenants aren't going to get relief. So it's almost like this domino effect here. In the end, what's going to happen is there will be less rental properties available and rent will go up and qualifications will go up. So people who think, well, I'll just find a rental property really easy next month or in six months, it's going to be different when you get evicted and the, and the standards are higher to get yourself into a new place. That's what's going to happen just because it's the nature of the business. So, you know, we always hear about who's behind on rent. So 6.7 million people behind on rent for that week, that survey, 27%. Uh, say they can't, uh, they don't expect to be able to pay next month's rent as well too. So these are small samples, and they're not always accurate. But the whole, I think the numbers are bigger. But the whole point though is that there's problems out there. Renters are having major financial issues, and we get that. So you know, 60% of single-family rental homeowners who are owed back rent receive the necessary paperwork from the tenants as required by the CDC. So to receive the relief money, but the relief money has to get out. With so, with so many still waiting for relief, about a third of landlords say they will be forced to tighten standards when evaluating future rental applications, and 11% said they've already started to sell or have been forced to sell at least one of their properties, if not more. So as I said here, housing market, high demand, well, guess what? Maybe if you sell that rental property, who's going to buy it? Could be a, a home buyer, a primary residence person. So guess what? That's one less rental property available already in a pretty tight rental market as well, too. So this just basically um, is like a self-perpetuating problem over and over again. So the real issue is why can't we get money into people's hands? So 40% of landlords have no relief. And listen, let, let me say that here right now, 60% of, of their survey said they filed the paperwork, all right? That doesn't, doesn't mean the relief is there. That means they will get the relief at some point in time. The relief is being held up. So, you know, there's been uh, already the, the Rescue Act and the one in December that was passed basically said, yeah, we're going to earmark about $50 billion for landlord tenant issues. But the problem is I don't know anybody who's getting this money. And, and that's the big thing. Where is this money coming? How is it being administered? You can talk about how great this opportunity is to have this money flowing. But until it gets into people's hands, it does nothing. All right. And that's the situation right now. So as time goes on, more and more landlords will be forced to sell. That 11% is going to get higher and higher. It's going to cause some major issues for people. Uh, this is on CNBC. I'll put the link in the um, information section of the video. This lady here is saying it's been about six months with these tenants, uh, um, and we've lost, I think, about $12,000 so far just in the rents. And you know there's also late payment charges and things. They could collect other fees. So they're losing money here. Um, tenants who are refusing to pay a rent or, 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 or not paying or refusing to respond to her, uh, if they didn't file the paperwork to get the relief, she gets nothing. So this is what happens, right? You have a situation with the landlord not getting money. They're after the tenant. The tenant says, I don't have to pay you. They don't engage. They don't respond. It's at a standoff. 
problems happen, okay? If it's very frustrating for people and, and she feels like she's being taken advantage of. So in the end, to cover her losses, she's going to have to start you know, selling her properties. And here's the deal. Um, you want to buy a property? Okay, I'm going to buy a property today from a landlord who's got a tenant who's in there not paying. Well, guess what? You now inherit, inherit that tenant. So even though you now own the property and they're no longer a, we'll call it, you know, tenant for you, you want to move in, you're going to have to go through the process of either buying them out or giving them some cash, right, we call cash for keys to get the heck out or doing an eviction process yourself. So you see, there's still problems as time goes on here. So uh, they're, they're saying here more than half the rental stock in the nation is owned by smaller landlords and more than half those landlords are tenants who have missed payments during the pandemic. So really, this is not going to get any better anytime soon. So please keep that in mind. What we were talking about a while ago is coming to fruition. This is part of the, of, we'll, we'll call it part of the area that no one really talks about in the mainstream media because we're just focused on forbearance and equity and things like that. This is where the real problems are. This will help push the, you know, us into the, a nasty part of the housing, whether it's a crash or crisis, it's going to get there. So thanks again, guys. Try to get this as quick as possible here. I'm talking as fast as I can, trying to make sense and not stutter. Anyway, if you're not a, if you're not a subscriber, please help my channel grow and subscribe. If you want to get a hold of me, you know where to get a hold of me. Send me an email. Uh, give me your information. I can call you and we can talk real estate. Okay, guys, thanks very much. Look forward to talking to you later on in a couple of days. Take care.